um, and kind of understand about your past before you sort of delve into the present and what your future plans are. So do you have some high school memories that really stand out to you? Uh, yes, I do. I, uh, I, I completed a four-year high school course in three years. And while it was wonderful to do that, if I had to do it all over again, I wouldn't do it. And here are my reasons why I wouldn't do it. Number one, by completing the four years in three, I was a year ahead of my class. So therefore, I graduated with a lot of folks that I didn't know. And, you know, I, I, I miss out on the prom, uh, the senior trip, and I, I went, but I went with strangers. So while at the time, that was very exciting, you know, for me to, to, get, a, to get a jump, but as I look back, now I wish I had not done it. So at that time, that, that was very exciting to be able to finish high school at, uh, I, I think I was about 17, and, and get a job on, on uh, college. So that was very exciting to me, uh, but I would not recommend that to anyone. In, in addition to that, uh, my grades were, were very good. I always had very good grades because I recognized very early on how important it is uh, to get a good education. And uh, studying and doing homework were chores that I really enjoyed. And my, my parents were very supportive in terms of uh, knowing that I had those chores to do and so they lightened up on the other chores. They were very supportive. So that, that really stands out for me, uh, the academic achievement that I uh, achieved during my high school years. And did you win any awards specifically, or were you honored in any way for your achievements? Yes, I was. I, I, achieved, I achieved the award, the highest award in, in math. And one of the reasons that I did that was because I, I'm, I'm, I was very good in geometry. I was really, really good in geometry and trigonometry. I was very good. So I, I, I achieved the award of the, the highest award in math in high school. In addition to that, I also received a scholarship, an academic scholarship. So those were the awards that I had achieved. So were you ever called any nicknames or anything during your high school experience? Yes. Yes, um, I, I will share with you the one that I continue to use, and that is Mike, in my uh, I have been referred to as Mike, and as well as the other one that uh, some folks who, who know me use is Chat, C-H-A-T. So Mike and Chat are some names I've been called for many, many years. Are there stories behind? Those names, or the biggest come about? Um, they they started with one person, and then other people would, would just pick it up for some reason. So, when you were growing up in high school, did you have a certain um, occupation in mind, and did that change along the way? And can you explain why? Yes, I I really wanted to be a medical doctor. So uh, when I went to college, I, I uh, concentrated on uh, biology and, and chemistry. And while I did very well in biology, I didn't do it as, as well in chemistry. And there was only one chemistry teacher. And I, you, you probably don't know that much about politics in college, you know, but, and, and I didn't either. So I made a mistake. Um, I pledged 
a fraternity that was opposite to the chemistry teacher uh, a fraternity. In fact, he was the sponsor of another fraternity. Now, I wasn't smart enough or savvy enough to realize what I was doing. So all of the students, all of the young males who pledged his fraternity, they received A's and B's. Those of us who were foolish enough not to do that got the C's and D's. So I wound up with a couple of C's in chemistry. So I knew, hey, wait a minute, I'm not going to get in it into any medical school with C's in chemistry. So that's when I changed my major from chemistry to math. And I, I decided to become a math teacher. So is that um, what you've continued to do throughout your entire college experience? You, yes. You were in that degree. And then when did you decide to go back to school to um, gain a degree, like a further degrees? Well, um, I've, I've always liked school, so I, I decided right away to get a master's uh, degree, and so um, I, I was able to get a, a master's degree from uh, Temple University, and then around that time, the, they, they were really pushing science, and they were providing scholarships and grants to teachers of, of science. So I was able to get a, um, a grant to attend uh, uh, the University of Arizona. Uh, so I, I attended there and uh, I achieved another master's degree in, um, in, in, the, in, in the teaching of science. And then I, um, after teaching for a while, I decided that I, I wanted to be an administrator, a principal. So I had to become, I had to go back to school to take some courses. So realizing that I had to take about 15 courses uh, in order to be certified to be a principal, when I looked at the number of courses I would have to take to get a doctorate, it was only a few more courses so I said, why not? Why not go for the big, the big fish rather than just the little fish? So then I make the decision to go to get my doctorate as part of getting my certification to be a principal. So that's how I wound up with uh, two master's degrees and, uh, and a doctorate. So are there any big moments that you would say change your life or your outlook on life? <clears throat> well, when, when, uh, when I was offered the opportunity to become principal here at Chero East, that was a very exciting time for me because I had been the assistant superintendent for the Cherry Hill School District for nine years. And I had been in the central office for nine years just dealing mostly with uh, adults. And the opportunity to come to come and, and, and be with young scholars again was just really very exciting for me. So um, that was a very exciting time given the opportunity to, to come back to a school and to work with the young scholars again. Very exciting. So you're talking about um, students. So when you were a student in high school and growing up, um, can you talk about your family life and also how your up upbringing changed you? Okay. Um, my family life, there are four, of, uh, four siblings in, in my family, um, a brother and um, two sisters and I, I'm the oldest and and you know there, there's there's a there's a saying that the oldest child does uh, 
achieve a little bit more than than the others in the in the family? I don't know if you heard that or not, but 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 I have. So, um, so I ha have been very fortunate to have done very well in school, and and I was able to to use my knowledge to uh, to support and, and help my, my siblings. I, I supported them in terms of helping them with, with the homework and, in, and, and encouraging them. They, uh, they always um, disliked the fact that, uh, that when, they, when they followed me in high school and had some of my same teachers, my, the teachers expected them to be another, another me. And, and they were not, you know, I mean, we are all different. And so they, they, they felt, uh, it didn't make them feel good when uh, the teachers made comparison between them and me and what I was able to achieve. Uh, so that was not a good thing for them. But uh, I was able to, uh, to assist them, to support them, and all of my, siblings uh, graduated from, uh, from college. And so that, that's a, a very good thing. Um, my, my father and mother were very strict. Uh, education uh, meant a great deal to, uh, to them. Uh, I had a curfew. Um, they had to know where I was at all times. So I feel that the way that I was reared by my parents helped me to stay out of trouble and is one of the reasons that I'm able to be here today. So are, I know you're talking about your father and mother influenced your life obviously. Are there other big influences that occurred in your childhood or this in college as well? Yes. Um, there was a cousin who, who, who was the first, first uh, college uh, graduate in, in our entire family. And uh, he was very supportive of, of what uh, I was trying to do. And, and he served as one of my mentors. So uh, when I needed uh, some assistance uh, with my homework, he was the one that I turned to. And in fact, I, I was very fortunate that he lived in our home while he was going to college. So he served as my mentor, and he was someone that I was able to look up to in terms of uh, the kind of career that I wanted to have. So I know you grew up in the South, and while you were there, did you have experiences with racism during that time? And could, if you could, could you go into examples of that? Yes, um, racism was rampant when, when I, came up and I, I came up in at the time when there was separate everything separate everything uh, I can recall that that when I got on the public bus that I had to give the, the bus driver my fare um, at the front door and then I had to walk to the rear door to get on the bus I can recall um, uh, knowing that if there was a seat uh, in the rear of the bus, and, and there was a sign that says white only, um, so I had to sit. We had to sit behind that sign, and and I had to I had to realize that if any white person got on the bus and the white section filled up, that I had to get up and give and give my seat. That that was something that I clearly understood. Um, another thing that, that, I, that I understood was that, um, was that you, you also, I, I, we had to say, people of color had to say, yes ma'am, and, and no, yes ma'am, no ma'am, yes sir, no sir. Um, I, 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 I never went to, I, I never went to school in, in Mississippi with, um, with people other than people of color. 
All of my teachers were, were people of color. All of my classmates were people of color. So I, I, I recall that very clearly. And uh, I, I certainly, you, you probably heard of Emmett Till. Emmett Till? Yeah. Okay, Emmett Till was killed. He, he was a young African-American uh, young man who, who came from Chicago to visit his family. And Chicago was much different from Mississippi. And um, his behavior upset some, some people and he was uh, lynched. So, 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 so that, that was a lesson for all of us to know that there were certain behaviors that, that we could not do. And so you always have to be aware of those behaviors. Do you remember when exactly in your life the tide started to change and people became more accepting? Was there a certain moment or maybe a certain age at which uh, the tide of the country started to change? Yes, it started to change in, in the late 60s and, and, and 70s. It, it started to change and uh, to change for the better. Uh, we still have a long ways to go, but certainly uh, there have been changes. In fact, the fact of the matter that I'm sitting here today is certainly an, an indication that things have changed because if, it, if we were back there, I wouldn't be sitting here and you wouldn't be sitting there. So from the South, how did you end up here in New Jersey? Well, um, I wanted to go uh, to, to grad school. And at that time, um, I couldn't go to uh, Mississippi State. I couldn't go to the University of Mississippi because of my color. So um, I, in order to go to grad school, I had to come either east or north. So I decided to, to come east. And at that time, Mississippi paid for people of color, rather than to attend their their schools, they paid for uh, for us to go outside of the state uh, to keep us from going to uh, to to schools and within the state because of the uh, the the segregation laws that, that they had. Okay, so um. Can, I know you talked about a little bit about college when I talked to you before, but could you go more in depth about your college experience and how that really impacted you today and what values you have today like in your, when you're a principal? I, I tell you, my four years in college were the best of, of, of my life. I mean, really, I, 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 I look back on those days and boy, if I could do them again, I would do them all over again. They, they, they were wonderful years. You know, I, I had a chance to get away from my parents, who were very strict, and uh, and I could do my own thing. Wow, it was great. Um, and, um, and, and and once again, um, be, because I was a high achiever, um, I, I I did very well. I, I did very well in college, and 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 one of the things that that I remember most is, is that. Um, after each marking period, um, when when I went to the to, to the cafeteria, um, people would be excited about my grades, and and always had their high grades, A's and B's, and and they were all always except for those C's, just those two C's in chemistry. Uh, so they were always excited about what my grades were. Um, so being accepted, being accepted as a scholar, being accepted because I was a scholar was really important to me. And maybe that's one of the reasons I, 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 I chose that word, to right. keep using it over and over again. Because it, it was very exciting to me um, in college uh, to be recognized and accepted because I was a college, because I, I was a scholar. Now, in addition to that, I did, um, I played uh, football in college, I played uh, baseball, baseball in college, and I ran, I ran track. 
So I did have some sports. In addition to that, uh, as I said, I, I pledged uh, a fraternity. I became, I became president of my uh, fraternity. I got on a newspaper uh, uh, team. And in, in, my, in my junior year, I became editor in chief of the college newspaper. So I was editor-in-chief of the, of the college newspaper in my junior and senior years. And that was very rewarding. But a lot of work, as you well know, because when it comes down to getting that paper out, who, who does the most work? The editors, okay? The editors uh, do the most work. So it, while I, I spent many, many hours in, in the office and, and to make sure that those editions got out and got out uh, in terms of high quality and on time, a lot of hours doing that. So that was very exciting to me. So in addition to that, I also served as, as, a, as assistant to a couple of uh, college professors. You, you have to understand uh, that I was, my family was poor. Uh, the only way I went to college was the fact that I had a scholarship and, and I was willing to work uh, various jobs. Um, so I had, to, I was assistant to a couple of college professors. In addition to that, the college that I, that I, that I attended was a, a church-related uh, college. And there was a, a chapel on, on, on campus. And we had to attend a 30-minute service three times a week, Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. We had to go to a 30-minute service. Now, I was able to get a job cleaning the chapel um, that would help with my, my tuition. So I was able, so I also cleaned the chapel three times a week, and that helped to pay my uh, expenses for for college. So I had a I I had a very exciting life in college. It was a lot of fun, a lot of work. Uh, you know, uh, you know what? Keep in mind that I I, I was staying up with, with my grades. Uh, I I was doing sports. I was in a fraternity. I, I cleaned the, the, the chapel. It was a lot of work, but a lot of fun. In addition to that, I must say uh, that I had several girlfriends, okay? Not, not at the same time. <laughs> not at the same time. But I, I did have several girlfriends, and, and um, um, it, it, was, it was a lot of fun. So you kind of discussed um some sports that you were involved in during college. So what were some sports opportunities you had in your youth and why did you pass them up to, well, obviously now you're a principal, so you went to the educational field. So what made you decide that? What made me decide? That you, I, I wasn't sure that, like, um, I've heard before that you've had sports opportunities and you were talking about how you were involved in a lot of sports. So you could have kind of gone down that field and try to pursue mm -hmm. professional, professional career, career. Yeah. Yeah. sports. Right. Well, I, 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 was, I, I was offered the opportunity to come and try out for, for the St. Louis Cardinals uh, when, when I was um, in, in college. But I, I, I quickly made the decision that I wanted a college degree. And, and, and I pushed that aside uh, because I wanted a college degree. I was afraid that, that if I went and, and made a, a farm team or whatever, that I would never complete a college degree. And the college degree was important to me. So that was a reason why I did not pursue the professional baseball because of the college degree. And, and, and if you remember, if you recall back then, things were quite different again. Uh, uh, there were the black league, uh, leagues, and well, they were called the Negro leagues at that time. They, they, uh, the integration at the major leagues had not taken place. So uh, there wasn't a lot of money involved here. So that, that was another reason. 
So what is your earliest memory as a child that you can think of? My earliest memory is, is when I was about three years old and, and we moved from one location to another uh, location. Uh, we, we moved from a rented house uh, to, a, uh, to a home that my father was, my father and mother were, were purchasing. So that, that's the memory that I remember uh, moving, packing up, moving from one place to another place and feeling really good about it. The fact that it was a much nicer place and a much larger place. Now, I know you're talking about your own family life when you were a child, but once you uh, grew up and were able to have your own family, how did that impact you? And can you kind of describe that? Uh, the impact was I, I, um, I did pick up some of my parents' re uh, rearing, and I think my children would tell you that I was a strict parent that education was important, and education came first before anything else. So we have three children, and all of them are college graduates, and they all have um, professional degrees. So uh, my uh, childhood, childhood rearing, and uh, how I was reared by, by my parents sort of followed me um, and also in terms of education uh, the drive the support that i was given i have done the, the very same thing uh, did any of them want to go into like an educational field like you did or no oh yes well my my, my oldest daughter uh, is a, is a teacher so the answer to that is yes my son, my son is a veterinarian, and my daughter is a lawyer. So I, one out of three. You know they say you don't succeed as a parent until your grandchildren succeed. Yeah. So I'm sure you, you know your parents are right. very happy right. of what they produce. And, so. and one of our grandchildren graduated from Howard last year, and the second one we only have two. The second one uh, uh, is at Villanova. And we've had some really good times in the past two or three weeks. Right, we've yeah. Some really great times. Um, so if you had to make a time of your past, could you just describe three or four moments that really are like the highlights of your different experiences throughout? Okay. First, uh, graduating from, uh, from high school was, was a real accomplishment for me because keep in mind, uh, back in the day, um, the percentage of, of students graduating from high school was very low. It probably, the percentage was probably somewhere around 20 or 25 percent. So the fact that I graduated from high school was a real accomplishment. Uh, not only for me, but for my family. And then secondly, uh, going on to college, uh, again, when you look at the percentage of, of young people who graduated and then went on to college, then we're talking about a, a, a very small percentage. So the fact that I went on to college, and then secondly, to be able to, to go to college and finish college in four years is another real accomplishment. You know, some people take five, six, seven, eight years. So that was another accomplishment. And then moving uh, from the South to the East and being able to get a job uh, in Philadelphia as a classroom teacher was another accomplishment. And then getting married to a, a young lady who um, I'm still married to after, after a lot of years and having three children and in, along the way uh, getting a doctorate and then becoming a principal and then later on becoming uh, an assistant superintendent 
are some highlights that are very meaningful to me.